what we have seen is that our note is done even in the budget also even everywhere we are being treated a second model you see neglected now people wants change so i think people will change in the future even now look at the debt trap it's not me who is speaking it's the cag report but trying to bulldoze the cag it's uh, very funny actually our people are educated now you cannot just fool around if you look at the recent political development in the state with the uh, defection of the three former congress legislators to the ruling npp how do you look at the trends sir no i don't see i don't see any defection or defecting anymore these people doesn't have a value actually because when they were here i don't know when they were not there i don't know they are not thinking about npp also hangne here in uh, kasi jain jain here okay they are seeing that only congress and npp may, may might make some changes Khubley Palok sa si sin ni Priyanka Sobhai P shakani ka one on one interview ke jongi but menta kinti ni don ya u MP jongka lok sabha na potura ke tau saling a sangma u bedangshan bala job ya kani ka election nang thina potura ba kani ka ke sin bani kong bangi layo bani ke do u hadin ga jing job ke jong u tingi nya kran ba u MP jongka tura halor ki mar ki ba pher ba pher ki ba ta ke imlang sa lang ge jongi kan thop ru ki jingkla ha ke sang hima sima Uh, so thank you so much sir for agreeing to do this with us i believe this is the first time uh, after you won the elections that we having this um, you know this interview so my first question is um, how is the experience of you know uh, being an mp you know from an mla now you've come to a new level of being an mp how is the how do you feel serving the people right now the responsibility is much bigger mm-hmm. much wider now in meghalaya as an mla you can concentrate only about meghalaya and then more about about our own people mm-hmm. but likewise in delhi you just cannot concentrate only about meghalaya anymore yeah. at least you have to have a knowledge about what is happening within our country and outside the country for example last time you might have seen what was happening in bangladesh mm-hmm. so that effect will definitely come to us so even in you know other parts of the world like china ukraine and then iran so likewise we have to know about them also then only you see now all the responsibility not only towards the meghalaya but uh, to the northeast and to the whole parts of the india so it is much much uh, you know bigger and then you have to take responsibility of the others also not only the you know the the you know education system even the economic systems of the whole uh, country as a whole so oh, it's much much uh, the responsibility is much bigger so if you talk if we talk about uh, this relationship that all the mps of the northeast region have because we know this time around even manipur that has been going through a lot of trouble have elected uh, two uh, congress mlas including assam so w- how do you work about you know bringing a solution in along with taking along other mps from other parties yeah right now uh, what we are doing is that especially uh, we have already formed the northeast them for you and then along with all the other non congress also non bjp also all the other uh, party aside actually we were trying to discuss how to resolve the situation not only in manipur mm-hmm. other parts of the northeast also because in manipur the issues are very big mm-hmm. no doubt about that even in some part of the uh, assam also there's a lots of issue in our meghalaya also there's a lots of issue so talk, uh, taking a cognizance of each and every issue from each and every state we have already formed the northeast you know forum there was already there but we want to make it more effective because what we have seen is that our northeastern even in the budget also even everywhere we are being treated a second model you see mm. neglected because in the whole northeast we don't have much uh, mps maybe that's the reason why our population is very much much less maybe that's the reason why they neglect us but uh, right now along with the minister even kiran diju and all the other you know uh, mlas yes yes sir uh, yeah sarbananda sonwal and all the others uh, we are having a northeastern forum and then we are trying to discuss it out what are the issues that really needed to be taken care of now for example flood also mm-hmm. there was a lots of floods even in manipur even in meghalaya even in assam even in nagaland also so likewise we are trying to discuss pinpoint certain areas where 
the you know central government has to take cognizance about the issues pertaining to the north east so this is do this is uh, you're doing this putting keeping aside party politics yes just uh, putting aside the party politics especially in uh, such cases we don't have the party you know uh, issues uh, with any other party any other member. we are like a family out there so we are trying to discuss things out and then you know uh, try to solve the problem along with the ruling let it be ruling let it be oppositions we don't uh, you know they don't see us also in that way so we are trying to do our best now we talk about the the, the recent um, turmoil in in our neighboring country bangladesh and how states like meghalaya assam and tripura including west bengal uh, are going to be affected because they share a border with Bangladesh. Yes, yes. How are we, you addressing this? We share concept? a border about like 4,400 something kilometer. Mm -hmm. And Meghalai itself around 300, 400 something like the 300 plus I think. So now what we have seen is that we are trying to pinpoint the area where the main power, even the BSFs are not enough to handle the, you know, the uh, illegal immigrants. Mm -hmm. Even the border fencing are not enough. So last time we have already written a letter to the Home Ministry and then, uh, you know, uh, after that incident in Bangladesh, they had a meeting in the Gohati, I think so. And then after that, we had already, all of us together, we have already appraised the situation because in the uh, in the border area, what happened is that not only now, not only now, from before itself, whenever any harvesting season or, or any kinds of a livestock is there in, in and around, what they does is that some illegal immigrants, they will just try to uh, come into us, cross the border and then you know, snatch everything in a day and then you know flash back, go back. Mm -hmm. So those are the threats that our people who are living in the border area used to face those kinds of trouble. So we have apprised all these matters seriously and then uh, we are taking up the serious, I mean, uh, this matter seriously. So if we come, if we come to um, state politics, uh, we know that Kampegre Baipol is not far away and uh, there is a lot of rumour that you are going to come up with a name who is probably going to replace you as the MLA of Kampegre and the, the NPP has already announced its candidates so uh, do you have someone in mind who yeah. has the M same calibre? NPP has already put up his I mean Chief Minister's wife yes. itself so I think we have already come up the applicant for the uh, Gambigri constituency from the Congress side is only one. His name is Jingjang M. Marak. Uh, so he's from Tura only. He's from part and parcel of that area. So likewise, uh, we are trying our best what can be done because right now, though NPP is in the government, they are trying to put all the missionaries, government missionaries in my cons in the old constituency, not only that one. Mm -hmm. Even from all the uh, other angle, they are trying to put everything. Uh, so... You know, do, do, you, do you still think that you still have an influence in Gambagri despite you moving out? You see, it's about the people actually. It's the people who takes the decision. It's not about you or anybody influence. It's about the mindset, how they will react. Now, since the government, NPP government is trying to bulldoze everything from all the angle, trying to inaugurate, trying to give this and that, trying to malaise the people with all sorts of... Uh, you know, productivity, giving them false promises, this and that, I'll do this and that, like that. Na? So, since we don't have a nature of giving them any false promises, uh, I'll go with that only. Mm -hmm. So, let's see what comes. It's the people only who will, uh, you know, believe actually. So, the parliamentary results, uh, I mean, they spoke volume because you won by a huge margin. Mm -hmm. So, do you think that the, 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 the wave now has changed in Garo Hills more towards the Congress? Again? Yeah, it's there actually. Now people want change, so I think people will change in the future. People and didn't, uh, we didn't promise anything, we didn't make any false promises. Mm. We have already shown them what is happening in and around the state and then outside the state. Now, for example, you might have seen me talking about the Manipur last time mm. on the inside the parliament. Uh, Okay, and then you might have seen I have talked some of the issues pertaining to the uh, the you know anemic uh, issues that uh, women's mortality rate in Assam even in Meghalaya also so education system that is very much at the lowest point in Meghalaya you might have seen so all those issues are still there actually even now look at the debt trap it's not me who is speaking it's the CAG report but trying to bulldoze the CAG it's uh, very funny actually I would have told everybody to take a loan 
you know, from anywhere if the compound interest will be given after 50 years. <laughs> So how, how do you look at the Chief Minister's reply to, to, to the CAG report? I think he has done his best to dodge away from the real issues by giving whatever information that he has given to the public. Mm. It's the public, whether the public will accept his, you know, verdict or I mean, the, you know, whatever comment he has made. Mm. So it's the public only, whether the, uh, whether the public will take it, whatever he has spelt it out after trying to defend the, uh, you know, that uh, financial crisis that we are having. Mm. So it's the people's choice only. So uh, because the Chief Minister kept on reiterating that most of these, the money that we get from ADB or maybe World Bank, they are grants, not loans. So how do you look at it? No, no, no. Everything is loans. How can you say <laughs> even the people, even the people knew that some of them are loans only. Loans to loans we have to pay back. It's not the central who will pay back. Some of the, you know, up to some extent, you know, center might pay. Mm. But most of them, we have to pay also. They're like 50, 10, 90, 10, like that. Na? So we have to look into the situation. So our people are educated now. Mm. You cannot just fool around. They also knew what is the reality and what is happening. Now, for example, school dropped out. I was really, really sad when, uh, you know, class... Uh, 12th first semester, second semester, those who are doing BAC, BCom, like that, they are going outside, dropping out their schools mm. to work and looking for a job. It's a very sad on the part. And lots of dropout nowadays. Mm. See, we, are, we should not play around our people's livelihood, you know. Exactly. Along with the school dropouts, because most of the statistics, they say that, especially in Gower Hills, there are many schools where the performance is, uh, in like in class 12 or class 10, is very poor. Some even 0% uh, pass percentage, particularly in Gower Hills. What do you have to say on the education system in the, very, in the region? Very, it's a very sad, actually, when the teachers are not being well fed, mm. when the teachers are not being given their rights the salaries are not well equipped. How do you expect the result will come out nicely? Huh? Mm -hmm. When you see the infrastructure itself is in a very dilapidated conditions, how you will feel good? Mm -hmm. So, when the education is not taken the first priority, how do you expect the others will take along? Mm -hmm. When the education itself is not having the equity in all corners of the Meghalaya, then what do you expect the result will be? You see, when school dropout means you are, it's adding up to the antisocial elements, yes. okay? School dropouts means more drugs addicts. Mm -hmm. It's a very sad, sad on the part of the government to say that. You see, there's a lots of money given by the central government to look after into these kinds of situations. There's lots of money given by the center to look into the startup for the uneducated and educated people. Okay, now aspire. Lots of monies are coming to you know open up the startup mm. so that our educated unemployment can do something. Not no, not just for the Meghalaya. The government of India is given. Government of India is given to all parts of the India, every nook and corner. So what is the quantum of money that has received by the government of Meghalaya, and what is the quantity of you know startup the government has given to the people of our state educated. So we have to look into this matter. So apparently the government has come up with uh, many of such programs like the CM Elevate or the Prime. Actually, you see, all these things are from the center. It is already there in the program itself. You can say PMEGP, mm -hmm. Prime Minister Employment Guarantee Scheme. You know, lots of schemes are there from the center. And then that uh, Aspire scheme, which you have now known as a prime hub in the state of Meghalaya, where the central government is giving lots and lots of money. Or even for the agriculture, even for the livestock. I don't know where these monies are going. So, unless and until these uh, monies are tracked, then then it will be wasted. So, if we talk about the And then moreover, region. when you look about the health issue, I mean the health sector, mm. I think NHM, they have already sent back around 700 in the last two, 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 one, two years, I think, because our state is, was not even able to give the UC like that. No? Mm -hmm. So, likewise. Yeah, you were so saying. yeah, so uh, again, talking about the Gar Hills region, uh, when you had campaigned for your for MP elections, I bet you have travelled the length and breadth of Gar Hills. Yes, yes. What are the main problems that the region is facing right now? It's a communication, of course, education, of course, and uh, you know, health. 
I have seen actually every nook and corner. I thought mine constituency was the one of the most backward, mm. which I have to, you know, back every now and then from the government. When I was in the government also, I mm. tried to give a development to my constituency. And then even though when I was in the opposition, I tried to do so, begging around every nook and corner, begging around to, I, I knocked the door of each and every minister so that my people will get some, uh, you know, benefit. Mm. And I did so. But to my surprise, when I have seen the other, you know, constituency, it's more worse than my constituency, you know. Yeah. So how you plan to address these issues that Garils uh, is yeah. facing? Now I had already talked with the, you know, union minister. Minister, union minister has already addressed to me regarding the Eclabia school and all the other uh, residential school from the MORTH. You might have seen, I've already given a letter from the MORTH that uh, uh, 15 numbers of schools which was given to Garu Hills right now, mm. some of them are still under progress and then most of them are not yet started. Mm. So we had a meeting with the, uh, you know, uh, director from the education and then we have a price about, he has already a price about the situation, why it cannot be started yet. Mm -hmm. And then, so I have told him to uh, give me in, uh, you know, uh, whatever meeting that we had to send them uh, minutes at the earliest so that we can follow up the matter. And then moreover, whatever the public, uh, especially in, you know, uh, or on the ground, whatever the issues are there, we will solve the matter, resolve the matter, and then try to do it at the earliest. 15 numbers, Eklabia for the school, I mean for the Garo Hills, and then around 30 numbers for the Kasil site also, Kasi Jaintia. And so one more thing, um, for the Northeast region, we have the donor, and then we have NEC also, mm. uh, that have been, that are there to provide, you know, funding and, and support to the region. Mm. How much has the region actually benefited from the funding by these ministries? So right now, as I've told you, I'm just a new out here. It's yeah. been just two months only. So I'm trying to get into this matter. And then, but uh, the ministry are so keen to give us money. Only thing is that we have to give us specifications about the project where we will do it. Yeah. And the, what kind of project that we are going to do it. Centers are ready to give any amount to the state. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now it's our approach. How do we give it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Our our style, how we will give them, make the proposal. Now, for example, under the, you know, FMB, FMP, flood management program, there was a huge money from the center. Mm. But since the state has not given a single proposal to the central government, how do they supposed to release the money? Mm. Not even a single project was sent by the state to the center. Now, look at Assam has got around 100 numbers from the center for the flood management, from the flood management program. Mm. Manipur has got 22. Nagaland has got three or eleven. Likewise, all the states from the northeast they have got only Meghalaya didn't get. Meghalaya got only zero. Because Meghalaya did not <coughs> send any of these proposals. I can show you. I have the list also. Yeah. I can show you. Meghalaya yeah. didn't get even a single project from that FMP. Because Meghalaya is also prone to flood. Garo yes, yes, yes. Flood. That's why I was surprised. Not even a single project we received because we didn't send. Why Meghalaya didn't send? I don't know. And there are also reports that uh, because we do not submit a UC, that's why money that has been sent to us has to be returned. Yes, you didn't see. In the last, uh, when I was a PAC, PSC, remember? Uh -huh. At that time, around 4,450 crore was sent back to Delhi because we cannot provide the UC, you know. Mm -hmm. Likewise, there's a lots of others. So other. why could we provide the UC? I don't understand, like, what is the gap? What is the problem? Why can't we utilize? I don't know. Even from the even from the you know NHM also because NHM people need lots of help mm. in the uh, you know in the villages in the villages. But I don't know why we can't use it. We should have used it. You know, mm. we should have used it. All those you know money whatever has been sent to the state. If we don't use it, that means we are handicapped in some way. Or the other mm. that means we are not useful. We are not good at all. Mm. We are not fit enough. So how do you expect the central will send us more? Unless and until if the central is not sending, that means we have to keep begging about the loan. Mm. We have to keep asking for the loan. Now, sir, if we talk about politics again, um, if you look at the recent political development in the state with the uh, defection of the three former Congress legislators to the ruling NPP, how do you look at the trend, sir? No, I don't see. I don't see any defection or defecting anymore. These people doesn't have a value actually because <laughs> I don't see any any problem. I don't I don't have any itches or any kind of uh, cringy about they went. 
because when they were here i don't know when they were not there i don't know <laughs> <laughs> because let let me tell you it's the people it's the people who will decide it's not them it's not the mlas so people should by now realize who will be word which party will be word who will be helping them because these were the same people i'm telling you the same people who were in the congress government also who were in the md government also mpa government also, right mm. you can name out the list of all those ministers yeah. who were there so sometimes it's the people it's the people who made the wrong choice mm. about the mls they elect so in the but future would would this uh, be a major blow for the congress ah, that is trying no, to no 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 you see that's why i'm telling you this emily thing you're talking about it's not the major blow mm. when the people will decide it will be a major blow because it's the people who made a choice you got my point mm. ultimate decision is the with the people ultimate choice is the people so who are these emelies tell me mm. these emelies are made by the people so if the people decide tomorrow the majority then people can bring back any tom dick and harry mm. not is necessary who cheated the people who cheated the party who you know does everything for their own benefit mm. not the hypocrite you got my point yes. one should not choose any hypocrite or any people who think for their family only people yeah, should choose in the future who will think for them If we look at the Lok Sabha elections, uh, it, it, the, the Congress had done very well, even though they are in the position, but they did very well. And uh, there is also speculation that the Congress will also perform better in the state of Meghalaya, probably in the MDC or maybe the M the next uh, Assembly elections. Mm -hmm. But in the recent election, the 2022 elections, 2023 elections, sorry, some elections, the people had chosen five Congress MLAs. Now after for, zero, uh, yes. Five Congress MLAs now only one remaining, only Bar Ronnie Lingdo remains. So doesn't it also send a message to the people like you know we voted for a Congress person to be, you know for for a party, but now these people are leaving. So would that also affect the Congress no, party? No, no, no. That's why I'm telling you, one should not uh, vote in the future mm. for a selfish and hypocrite. Mm. You got my point. So Congress will have a better uh, candidate in the future. I think people should make a choice, and then people should bring that. Okay, this guy will be the right for us like that. No? So we will give a better product. So uh, will the will the Congress make a comeback in the twenty twenty? Hundred percent, Congress will definitely come in, and it will be definitely for the people only. Okay. Congress will come back for the people only, mm -hmm. and for the people only. So people definitely next time, every things is changing. Mm -hmm. So once you know, once your mechanics or garage is not good, you change the whole thing, bring the new mechanics, new garage. Ma, and the new engine also. <laughs> <laughs> if we look at again, if we look at the the political scenario in the state, we have a very, um, uh, let's say, a very uh, strong regional party in the form of the Voice of the People Party, especially in the Khasi Jaintia region. And uh, apparently, it looked like uh, both the NPP and the Congress will have a tough time, you know, fighting this uh, regional force in the MDC election and also in the upcoming uh, no, as assembly. No, I'm telling you actually, it'll depend upon the product. The second, the first is with the people, whom they think they will believe in, and they will trust in. so it's about a trust and believing in okay mm. so after all it's not the npp it's not the congress it's not the bbp who will decide mm. it's the people who will decide so i will definitely leave everything on the wisdom of people who will make their own future not us not me not you but what we will do is that next time we are trying to bring up a candidate who will only think for the people not for him not for his family so we need these those kinds of individuals mm. intellectuals who will definitely sacrifice for the state and for the future now say if we if we talk at the the pattern in which the people vote okay because there have been so many uh, write ups and articles where they have made a comparison between the khasi jaintia and the garo hills particularly in garo hills the, the the way people vote is very simple they either vote for the congress or the npp 
like that. But in the Khasi Hills, there are just too many parties to vote, too many regional parties and too many national parties. So uh, my question is, uh, how do you see the, 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 the mindset of the people in, in these regions? Like no, why is it that in people in the Garo Hills... Let me intervene out here. Yeah. Now, here also, what I'm seeing right now is that people mindset is already set, hmm. either for BBP or for Congress. Okay. Okay. No other parties seems like coming in between. They are not thinking about NPP also Hangne here in mm. Khasi and Jaintia. Okay. They are seeing that only Congress and then BBP may, may, might make some changes. Mm. So that hope is So you're is foreseeing that it will be uh, it will be BBP and Congress only in the next Yes, I think coming. so. Yes. Okay. I what think about so Gabriel, sir? Of course, Congress. It will be Congress versus <coughs> the NPP. I don't know about anybody, but it's definitely Congress. <laughs> <laughs> so if we talk about again um, in the last few weeks, the MPCC chief, um, Mr. Vincent H. Pala, had yeah. made serious allegations against uh, Deputy Chief Minister Mr. Sinyao Bhalangdhar, uh, alleging him of being involved in drug trade and co illegal coal trade and all that. <coughs> How do you see this? Sir? No, let me th um, let me tell you one thing. Actually, whenever Chief Minister or any Cabinet Ministers his cabinet ministers, you know, before becoming a cabinet minister, they sworn in, right? Mm. Okay, they sworn, they take a pledge, either in the name of God, okay, mm. but they take a pledge, okay. So when they take a pledge, any issues pertaining to any, any situations arises within the state, whose responsibility is it? Tell me. Make a point. Mm. You got my point. It's the ministers, mm. especially on the floor of the house. The minister himself has already uttered that more than three lakhs of individuals are already involved in drugs. Mm. And then we know that this drugs is become a malice in the society, mm. right? And then numbers of drugs are being hold and catch and then some of them has been thrown to jail right now. And then some of them, uh, you know, leaked out somewhere or the other and then they could not catch. Right? Mm. So, whom you are going to blame? The government or the public? Tell me. Why the security system within our state is very, very weak? Mm. So, how would you speak? Is it the minister or is it the common people? Why the security? Why the checking points? How many roads, the main roads are there in Meghalaya? Tell me. How many NH? Guwahati to Shillong and from Silchar to Guwahati. How many NH are there? Tell me. Only one. NH6. From Assam to Assam, right? From Assam to Assam. And then how many corridors are there in Meghalaya going to Garo Hills? Only one N2, NS51, and then another one is in from that, you know, uh, that uh, AMPT road. Only three. In these three area in Garo Hills, if you cannot secure it, mm. if the drugs and all kinds of illegal materials goes to the, comes to the state, whom you are going to blame? Tell me. Mm. Now, if any illegal ha things is happening within our state, whom you are going to blame? Are you going to the Are you going to blame the Rangbas? No. Are you going to blame the people? Are you going to blame the headman? Are you going to blame the Nokma? No, na. Why we bought? We bought so that our people can sleep in peace. Mm. Our people will be able to, you know, uh, see the development. Our people will be educated. My children will not become the thief or a drug addict or a, you know. Uh, public menaces or anti-social elements. You got my point. How many roads are there coming to our Shillong? Just look at that. Mm. Why they cannot put up a solid checking point? Why why the criminals are not scared of our security system? Mm. Why they keep on coming? Who are involved? Mm. Why they are so involved? You got my point. Now, from which time this, uh, you know, uh, this particular drugs has shoot up so suddenly. So maybe on the pretext he might be talking. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, s s before we wind up with this interview, uh, I just want to ask you one last question. Uh, going forward, what is the way for Meghalaya to actually come up again as 
number one as an education hub of the northeast number two as a, a you know a growing economy how do you how do you foresee meglaya and what are the steps that meglaya going to take if it's going to go in that you know direction first we have to take the education system very aggressively mm -hmm. now look at the teacher ratio in the lp school also like one teacher he's looking after three to four or maybe five classes how do you suppose that they will manage from lp school itself the dropping out rate goes down okay when it comes to the high school also you see most of our schools are not government run school they are adopt mm -hmm. and the government turn a blind bl eye on them okay mm -hmm. not giving a fixed salary not giving a good salary also then they will blame only the committee when something goes wrong okay unless and until we prioritize this education system nothing in this world is going to come up in you know you can you cannot refine it you cannot rewrite it you cannot revisit it unless and until we look at that particular education sector then only it will come to health sector once you are educated you will know how to take care of your society we will not take care of your children you will not take care of your wives also mm -hmm. now most of our uneducated mothers mm -hmm. are very you know uh, very uh, that uh, what do you call them that um, women's mortality right is because yeah. of that because they don't go for they don't give for yes, yes yes like that so they, that is because of the education lack of education you, yes. you got my point so these are the areas that we have to look into this matter mm. so um thank you so much sir for you know for giving us so much of inputs on the, uh, the things that you as an mp you are taking up uh, in the parliament and you know uh, raising issues like health and education that would benefit our state te parlok ka tungila yo sngoi ke jingkren jong mp ka tura ka bau lai kren halor ki mat ki pa phair ba phair na ka kwa ka khia shaka puli ka puthi shaka roi ka par om tang ha ka rilom garo hendrei ha rilom khasi ba jantia ula kren ru halor ka jinglong jingman jong ka sangi ma sima ba ka sensal kada ha ka jala ge jingi ba ula ong ru ki e gita ki benta ki bangila ban le ban wan ra ya ka roi ka par ha kri ban wan ra ya ka ta ge jing kiew ha ka jing nang jing start ba ka koi ka khia ha ka jala ge jong ni hi ba ula ban rap ru ba ka tang lingba ka jingnang jing sta tang lingba ka jing pin khamti ki khun samla ki jong i da ka ka jingnang ka jing tip bakila banya cha phrang bat ban pin long i ka ri ba ka jala ka jing i ka ba kieu na ka wei ka posh ka wei pat te palok ta da du ni syam bia mat phi ha ka wei pat ka por ngade ibang te maori na ka pentau for front media ku blai ka por jong phi baro